we do generally take a vested interest in the people that come into yeah. our barbershop. You're not just some name that's on our schedule that we cut your hair. Like my clients now, like you, for example, like I know that when I look at my schedule in the morning, I recognize almost every single name on my schedule and I can put a face with that name. I know who your, your kids are. I know who your wife is. I know what you do for yeah. a living. And those are the kind of relationships that really truly, I think, make a barbershop really mm. what, part of community. Hey folks, I'm Brooks Derrick, and this is A Lawyer, His Friends, and Food. A show about local business owners, their journeys, and the thing that brings people closer together, food. On today's episode, we sit down with Eric Clary, owner and operator of Old Crow Barbershop, and enjoy an absolute smorgasbord of amazing grub from Chicora Alley. Chicora Alley, with restaurants in downtown Greenville and Traveler's Rest, blends Caribbean island flavors with southern comfort cuisine in a dynamic and delicious way. Eric Clary was born and raised in Northern California, and after a few too many brushes with trouble, he walked into a recruiter's office and signed up for the Army. He spent the next 10 years either deployed or getting ready to deploy until he medically retired in 2013. So how'd this Army vet from Northern California end up opening a true neighborhood barbershop in Greenville, South Carolina? Well, let's find out. Well, my life's been all over the place, man. Yeah. I mean, the fact that I'm in South Carolina right now is still kind of shocked. So you go, <laughs> yeah, you go, okay, let's see here. Recruiter, recruiter, bend your ear. Yep. Um, where does that, where's that conversation take place? Um, actually, I'd gotten in a little trouble. Okay. Was just kind of trying to figure out like what I needed to do with my life. Cause I know that I wasn't that kind of person. Like I wasn't trying to like, I, I had a good upbringing as far as like family values and morality and all that kind of stuff goes. And I know that's not the direction my life, I wanted my life to go. Right. Um, so I ended up actually walking into the recruiter's office and it was a bit of a process and, and everything. But so I ended up joining the military around like 2000. So you go in there, sorry, you go yeah. in there and you're just like, I'm in your, I guess 20 year old mind, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you, you, yeah. you're going to 20, in your 20 year old mind, you're going, I'm on the wrong path. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so you're like, okay, was it like one morning you woke up and said, that's what the hell Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. Wow, okay. Yeah, I woke up one morning and was just like, you know what? Like, at that time, I was working for Comcast Cable as a service technician. Um, and so I woke up, I was hating my job. I had gotten in a little bit of trouble and was just like, you know what? Like, I need to get out of Sacramento. I need to get away from the influences that I had, the partying, the drinking. I mean, everything that a, your typical 20 year old kid is doing. And, or 40 year old too. Or 40 year old, at, you know, at this point, yeah. Um, so, but it's a little different when it's constructed. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. But, <laughs> but so, so we ended up, so I ended up going into the recruiter's office, talked to this recruiter, went through, started going through the whole process, picked a job. So I ended up going in originally, I went in, joined the army to be a radiology tech. Okay. What year would that, what year would that have been? Uh, 2004. 2004. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, so it started in 2003, but I ended up going finally after the process, swearing and all that stuff was done. I didn't leave for a while, so 2004 is when I ended up. And that's up. when you, that's your reserve, at your. Yeah, your I was in the reserve. Reserve right now, okay. Yep. Um, and so more or less I was looking for something to help me get an education, something to get me out of, you know, working in a bar, working in a restaurant, just because I knew that's not where I needed to be at that yep. time in my life. So, and I wanted to, you know, further my future. So I joined the military. What was that first like week or so like when you get in there? Oh, getting to the military? Yeah. Oh, geez. You know, you watch TV and you watch movies and you see like the boot camp thing. It's totally legit. <laughs> totally legit. It's a little different now because they've lightened up on a lot of the standards. But you get, you, I got to Fort Sam Houston, or no, sorry, Wichita Fall, no. Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri is where I went to basic training. All right. So I get to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and it was the most kind of surreal experience ever because I get there and you wait around for a few days before you actually go to basic training. They give you your uniforms. Um, you know, you're just kind of there, just, you know, picking up trash or just doing nothing menial, too nothing too crazy. And then the day comes where these cattle cars pull up and they're like, all right, get on the cattle car. So you get on these cattle cars and everything's kind of quiet and you're sitting there. 
and you drive down the road and all of a sudden you stop and you see all of a sudden all these drill sergeants and they're going into the ones in front of you first and the ones after that and next thing you know they're in yours and you've got all these dudes just yelling at you and like before they get on is the bus just like quiet like, oh yeah oh, dead shit, quiet what's about to happen no, nobody's talking <laughs> it's like it's like watching like something happen like a train wreck in front of you happen and you know it's inevitable you can't do and everybody's just it. like fuck you know so oh. these guys get on the bus and they're yelling at you and you know they're getting you off the bus and they're telling you to do this and then no you're doing it wrong so you throw it down and i mean it's just everything you do is wrong until it's right so yeah. it's just like constantly just going over the same thing so the first few hours you're just like what the fuck did i just get myself <laughs> into <laughs> and so that obviously you know that went on it was in the middle of winter so it was miserable and so I go through basic training. I get to San Antonio for AIT. So originally I'm supposed to be there to be a radiology tech. I wanted okay. to pick a job that would transfer, because I was in the reserves, I wanted to pick a job that would transfer into the civilian world with some applications. So like something I could get a job doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so I kept Smart getting- Smart for a 20 year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kept getting bumped out of these classes because prior service and people coming back from deployments take class priority over you. Okay. So I kept getting bumped out of class. So I'm there for weeks and weeks and weeks and I'm getting, I kept getting into trouble. And at this point, I mean, I'm not doing anything but picking up trash, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Every yeah. day, like painting rocks and like just doing, this is after, this is after basic training. After, okay. Yeah. So I'm in San Antonio and you're waiting kind of for your assignment. Or yeah. Class yeah. I'm waiting or, for my class to yeah, start yeah. and I would start, and then I would get kicked out because somebody else needed my slot, you okay. know, that kind of thing. So anyways, just there for way too long. So I ended up talking to a guy and he's like, well, we got a slot for a medic. If you want to be a medic, you can go down the hill. We'll put you through school. You can be a medic. I said, okay, let's do it. So I go down the hill, go through medic school, get back. And they're like, hey, listen, there's no slots for a medic in your reserve unit. So you're going to have to go to drill a couple hours away in San Francisco or up in Redding, California, or you can go through this six week course as a dental tech. And I'm like, and then you're going to go back and you can go right to your unit and drill in your unit in Sacramento and you're good. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So I go down, go through dental assistant program for like five weeks go back to my unit my unit is already deployed so i so when i show up at my unit i end up just working in the headquarters office and doing you know whatever and i'm back doing the same dumb shit i was doing before painting rocks picking up trash. well no oh i'm only there a couple days a week so i'm i'm working okay. in my reserve unit back working in the bars restaurants uh, that, kind, oh, that of, kind of stuff okay back to doing the same dumb shit i was doing before yeah. So, I so you're up, kind of caught like in this weird purgatory kind yeah, of yeah, sense of like, yeah. I've got this, these classes, I've, 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 I need an assignment, but um, my people are gone. Right. Don't. And I'm just, I'm in the reserves. So yeah. like typically you do like one weekend a month with right, the okay. reserves. So I end up going, covering down. When is this? What, what year is this? This is oh, geez, 2005? 2005? 2005? 2005? 2005? Okay, yeah, yeah, 2005. So I end up going on a very short deployment. Um, I come back and again, I've gotten in a little more trouble. And so there's a theme here. There was, a, there <laughs> was in my younger days, it was there's definitely, a theme here. <laughs> definitely a, a, a theme there. Um, so I end up deciding to go active duty because I was like, you know what? I can't do this sometimes army, sometimes bartender, bartender. or whatever, right. you know. So I go active duty, I go to Germany. Some people can do that. Some people can, I, I just, yeah. it wasn't for me. Right, right, right. So right. I go to Germany and I end up in a, a unit called the 464th. And this is 08, is this, this 08? Is, no, this is 07. 07, okay. So 2007, I end up in Germany and I end up in this unit, the 464th, which is a medical company. And it was the, the biggest unit of like just misfits and degenerates. They're so, like, they're like, Eric so, Clary, yeah. where can he fit these guys? Where is guys? the best place for this guy? 
Let's put them over here. <laughs> so they're getting ready to deploy, but I was in Germany for about a year before we deployed. Okay. But our whole mission with this unit was to deploy. So we literally just were constantly going to the field, training, getting ready, getting ready, getting getting ready, ready. coming back, drinking and way too much, partying way too much, then going back to the field, and it was just a cycle. And then we ended up deploying in 2008, and it was a 15 month deployment. So 2008, 2009, we, we're, we went to Kuwait, because it was middle of, German, or middle of winter in Germany, we stayed in Kuwait for a couple weeks. Okay. End up going to, um, I got stationed at Camp Liberty in right outside of Baghdad. Yep. And so, yeah, so I end up there and I end up part of, we basically had, we're in charge of the clinics and all this stuff. So um, the longest, most miserable deployment ever, but we, uh, I, worked, I worked in the prison for a little while, did random missions here and there. Um, I ended up getting hurt and I ended up basically jumping, after I got hurt, I ended up basically going from base to base, covering down. Oh, nice. My All man. Right. Thank you, Greg. Oh! Sauces, wings. They really have some of the best wings here, though, for real. Their wings are on point. But now Greg cooked them, so I don't know how good they're going to be. <laughs> but. <laughs> I said they Oh, have, yeah, baby. <laughs> I said they have the most awesome wings here. I said, but Greg cooked them, so I don't know how good they're going to be. <laughs> but, um, man, this food looks really good. So we eat here, my wife and I eat here a lot. Oh, shit, son. So much food here. My wife's going to be like, so you want to go to dinner later? And I'm like, no. No, I'm full of the No, I'm going to be way full. All right. Where should we start here? So I don't know. Let's, let's, let's figure out a pin. Where we were, you are traveling or basically get going from hospital to hospital to hospital right. at this point in time. Right. This before you get hurt or after no, you get hurt? No, this is after. Yeah, okay. this is after. So what I actually your, had an injury. What was your injury? Uh, I dislocated my left knee, so basically tore everything in my knee. Bunch of surgeries after that. I ended up with three, total three knee surgeries after after all was said and okay. done. But So um, I ended up, after deployment, well, while on deployment, I ended up re-enlisting. And so, again, my thinking was, I'm not necessarily at this point going to make the military a career, but I want to do, again, I want to, because I can't do what I did before, Yep. Um, I want to pick another job that's going to correlate very well into the civilian world for me. Yep. So I end up going to uh, dental lab school, of all things. And that, that you come back home and go to, th this is so, yeah, this, this is right after deployment. Texas? Yeah, so I end up in Wichita Falls, Texas. Right, where should we start here? I don't I'm know, gonna, dude. Let's put a pin in the pin, Texas pin thing. Pin in Wichita Falls, Texas. Um, Let's go. I'm going to grab one of these wings. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. And so here, grab that hot sauce right there. This that one? one, yeah. So this is their Burt's sauce. All right. And this sauce is, it's like habanero, but it's so freaking good. So All right. help yourself to some what of that. What do they got? Some kind of like, it's I'm just, gonna, I'm these gonna go are just like the dry rub wings, but I don't even know what the sauces are we got here, but pretty sure, I'm assuming that's ranch. Oh yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to go, uh, Bareback first. That's good. Oh, there, yeah, their wings are fire. Oh, yeah. Man, if I could pull something like that, this all at home. Oh, I can't. There's no way. Oh, my God. It's like, it's just sweet. Oh, yeah. And crispy, crispy. I always like the little crunchy, you know? Oh, yeah. Let's try this sauce you told me uh, about here. It's, it's fantastic. I go through like a bottle of that a week at home. That is, how have I never seen this one? It's definitely peppery, they make huh? it here. They, they make it here. Mm -hmm. Oh, no shit, okay. I'll get, Greg, I'll get Greg to get you a bottle before they 
I, wow. It's not over the top. Uh-uh. Got a lot of flavor. Yeah. Well, these are dynamite. Oh, yeah. I wonder what all these little things are. I don't know. That looks like some kind of chili. Yep. I like a honey sriracha yeah. or something rather. Like a traditional barbecue. Let's go here first. Yeah. Are there mm, tacos? Uh, wheat. Ooh, I like a... Man, on point. This is a, a feast, huh? Mm. <laughs> you guys are going to have to help us with this. Yeah. And then there, uh, this is one of my, well, this was like one of my very first go-tos when we first started coming here. My wife likes this one as well, but it's just a chicken burrito. Uh-huh. Also really good. I'm going to take a bite of that. Wow. These are really, really Dude, I'm telling you, right they're, my, they're my favorite favorite wings in Greenville, period. This is what we, we, what we do at home. I have like this. You got an air fryer? No, no, I, we, we smoke it on the, the egg. Oh yeah, that's good too. But I have a, um, this is hilarious. I have a, <laughs> I have a rub that we call uh, Derek's Dust. Mm. <laughs> and so Derek's we put, dust. Derek's Dust, Derek's Dust. And so we put, I put that on and we, so we do like a dry rub and then we have, we will have like either dips of all the, like we'll, we'll do a honey sriracha, you know, obviously the normal ranches and stuff like that, but right. like we have all that stuff um, to go around and we make a couple barbecue sauce at home too, but this is like my perfect little idea, like oh, yeah. a little like rub. And I then, like a dry rub and then definitely like one? dipping it in different sauces. That's yeah. kind of, I don't like necessarily like my wings like dripping, dripping with, with, with shitty, when you, you know, with when shitty you have teriyaki. A, when you have a beard, it just like, any oh. kind of saucy drippiness. That is like the that's a sweet, sweetie, sweet, a little spicy thing. Okay. Not too spicy actually, but sweet. Oh. And then there's sweet potato. I'm not a huge fan of sweet potato fries, but they're pretty good over here. These are homemade, huh? Oh yeah. Those got a little bit of a kick to them, I think. Whoa. Oh yeah. Oh man, these are. My wife would eat this whole plate of these things. She, I'm, I'm the same boat as you. I'm not a big. I'm not huge on sweet potato fries, but if you're like, I, my son likes them. So I always end up like, I'm like, I'm not a huge fan of sweet potato fries as I eat half of your sweet potato fries. <laughs> <laughs> my wife loves this shit. Yeah. These are so go good. Okay, I'm, now mm. I'm gonna do a, an all out. Oh yeah, get it. Man, that is really good. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, my nose is gonna be running the whole time. Oh my gosh, that'd be great on barbecue, huh? Oh uh, yeah, no dude, I've got like four bottles of that in my fridge at home and I put it on everything. Every time I come here, I usually just grab an extra bottle. Just because. Right, so, this is the really hard part, is we gotta eat and, and eat communicate. And talk? Eat okay. and communicate. <laughs> oh, you're just barking orders here, huh? Oh no. <laughs> All right, this is phenomenal. We're gonna both dig into one of those tacos, mm -hmm. though. Yes. Yeah, house, 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 house. All right, ready? Tell everyone who, who cooked this that this is really great. Uh, yeah. Oh, OG man over there. <laughs> All right. Ready? What is this? This is the brisket taco. Ah, uh, brisket taco. Brisket, tomato, cheese, a bacon jam, a little bit of romaine lettuce, and some regular cheese. So it's brisket, pimento cheese. What brisket. was that? Bacon jam. Bacon jam? Bacon jam. Yep. Caribbean bacon jam. Caribbean bacon jam, okay. Got some, we got some charred brisket here. Mm. That's actually, we, we braise our brisket. Mm. Braise mm. it overnight, every day. Yeah. Oh yeah. They do, um, they it's also like, do a Thai it's chicken like candy. taco. Oh yeah. Like beef candy. Oh yeah, beef, <laughs> beef candy. This is beef, beef candy. Mm. Oh my God.
You don't, don't want to put it I don't down. I don't know if us eating is good, good television or not, no. but this is delicious. My wives are going to watch this and be like, it's the most unattractive thing yeah. My wife will be like, ever. I see that every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, it's like the, um, was that Joe Dirt? Joe Dirt? He said, you know, I can't hit myself with it. He goes, she wants my body. My, my body. <laughs> All right. All right. So, more grocery. Nope. All right, so I back I need to more, need more than this now. Maybe I got there's a, there's a bunch over here if you need. That's all good. So back all to right, uh, so Wichita Falls. You go to Wichita Falls, and, and that's where you get more the continue the dental assignment. Right. So I figured I'd I'd use that and I'd go do the dental lab thing. Again, find a job that's going to correlate well in the civilian world. So good. Oh yeah, and um, so I do that. Go to the dental lab school. And then I end up in, um, after dental lab school, I end up in um, Augusta, Georgia, at Fort Gordon. Okay. So Fort Gordon, ultimately. This is where you get introduced to Greenville, right? This is where I get introduced okay. to Greenville. So Fort Gordon is where I end up be meeting one of my best friends, Tony Powledge, okay. who owns Old Time Tattoo and Barbershop in Augusta, Georgia. Now, did you, I read something on the internet where did you actually do some barber school early, I early did. in I your did. 20s? I started it like for briefly. Or early, I mean like yeah. around 20 when you yep. first, was that, was that why you're in the, in reserve? Yep. So I had a, an ex-girlfriend whose mom owned a salon and I had a bunch of buddies that were. I have no ex-girlfriends. Yeah, no, I don't either. Um, <laughs> love you, baby. Um, <laughs> and so I, uh, <laughs> Had a had a, 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 a girl that was not an ex-girlfriend whose mom owned a salon, had a bunch of buddies that were in the industry at that time. And um, my motivations were, well, these guys make good money and, you know, they're, they're meeting a bunch of chicks, so yeah. let's do it, you know. And so that's ultimately what started it, but I never finished it. Yep. So, so you fast forward, you're in Fort Gordon. Uh-huh. You're... you're Meet was was uh, Tony was Tony, Tony Tony was Tony in at Fort Gordon too or did you yeah, meet so him? Yeah, so he was no, so he was he's he's from Augusta. Okay. Um, really good friend of mine. Uh, was in big into the hardcore music scene, which is kind of where I came from as well. When you say hardcore um, music scene, what does that mean? Like punk rock, like okay. hardcore metal. Um, you don't mean he was hardcore in the music scene. He was into the hardcore music scene. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then just a really good group of guys that I got plugged into out there. Okay. Um, just solid dudes. Tony ended up becoming one of my best friends. And one night, and this is where the beginning of Old Crow Barbershop ultimately for me started. Okay. Um, I was getting ready to get out of the army, uh, medically retiring. And I didn't necessarily enjoy doing the dental lab thing. What were you um, doing? What was the dental lab thing? What was that job? So like? I got into making crowns appliances and, for, okay. no, I didn't get into the whole crown side of thing. I got into more of the um, partials. So, and, and like full dentures, basically making appliances for guys who'd been injured, mm. oh, things okay. like that, okay. you know? So it was a little bit more complicated than your just standard dental appliances. But at that time, there was only a couple labs in the civilian world that were doing it. One was in DC and one was in like Michigan, two places I had no Specifically desire. Specifically for, for, for military what I did, guys. Okay. Right. Well, yeah, more or less for what or I did. Trauma. Right? Okay, what yeah. I specialized in. Um, so mm. I ended up sitting around, hung out at my buddy's tattoo and barbershop all the time. He lived right around the corner from me. So he became a big influence on my life at that okay. time. And um, so we're sitting around one night at a place called the Pizza Joint in Augusta, Georgia. And they, it was like, I don't know, $5 for a tall boy, a PBR and a shot of Old Crow whiskey. Oh. So Old Crow. we're sitting there and I'm talking about going to barber school and I don't want to do the dental lab thing. And my whole military career was just really disgruntled at that point. Cause there was a lot of things I had tried to do that I wasn't able to do. And it was just like, I'm over it. And so, um, when I got basically offered the medical retirement, 
I just decided to make a career change. I had the GI Bill, so I had all the, everything lined up basically in order for me to make a career change at that right. point. Yeah. So we're sitting around talking about going to barber school and he's like, look, man, he's like, get through barber school. He's like, we can open up another Old Crow barber shop, or sorry, an old time tattoo and, you know, or you can work in my shop. Like, you know, we could open one in Greenville if that's where you want to go. Like, so we had all these big plans and I thought, well, you know, if I'm opening up, if I'm going to barber school and I want to open up a barber shop, what do I call it? And as we're sitting there drinking these $5 PBRs and shots of Old Crow whiskey, which is like the Delicious. worst rot gut freaking <laughs> bourbon ever. Uh, it does, just, that come, does it come in plastic containers? It does it? now, I believe. It does, it does now, I believe. But it was also back like then it was back, in the, it was well, fancy. back in the day, it was kind of <laughs> it was kind of the less expensive, more working man's type okay. of bourbon. Right. I didn't want to have like a really fancy barber shop. I didn't want anything bougie about it. I wanted it to be, my vision at that time was, I just wanted a working man's barber shop where guys can just come in, nothing pretentious about it. And, and that's kind of how my buddy's shop was, you know? So you're formulating this back then. You're just I was thinking. kind of formulating this back then, yeah. Back in, this is 2012. Okay, that's right, yep. And so I'm formulating this then, and I'm just like, I've got this in my, my head. Well, um, I come to Greenville, and I started school here in Greenville. Yep. And meanwhile, with this whole like old crow barbershop thing in my mind, so I struggled really bad, you know, getting out of the military. <clears throat> um, just how so? What does that mean? Financially, mentally, I mean, I went. I went through a divorce, lost everything, and I met my wife now. So are you going <clears throat> are you going through all this in Augusta? Is that when I went through part of this in Augusta. So okay. I was married in Augusta, we were separated, and she lived in Greenville and we decided to give it one more shot. So I moved to Green. That's ultimately that's why, why I moved, you moved that's here. That's why I moved she to Greenville. She was here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after like two months, she was gone. She bailed. So and when you are in Augusta, uh -huh. are you traveling to Greenville to see her? Is that what? Yeah, you're... quite a bit. Okay. Yeah, so we're, I'm back and forth all. I knew the time. there was like this flirting mm -hmm. with Greenville yeah. while you were in Augusta. Yeah. And it was because she was here, huh? Right. It was there wasn't like let's there go really party wasn't. in Greenville. But just... I really liked Greenville. Okay. And so you know when I was getting out, I was planning on moving back to California. Ultimately, right. like that was kind of something I was thinking about because we had we were split up. So here I am thinking about moving back to California. So I go back to California. I spend a few weeks there with some family and some friends. I'm looking at housing prices. I'm looking at the job market. I'm looking at all these things. And it's just like the life that I want for myself and for my future family is not going to be in California. Um, I mean, there's a lot of really cool barber shops in every shopping center. Like I would just, there's not, there would be nothing to separate myself right. there. And I really liked the, having lived in the South already for a while, I liked the openness of it. I liked the country. I liked the fact that you could own property and a house. Like that's almost non-existent in California unless you come from a family that already right, has that. Yeah. So when I made the decision <clears throat> to move to Greenville, it was like, okay, this is where I'm gonna start my life. Okay. So you make the, you, you say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna give this a go. Um, right. Are you, when you moved here to Greenville, are y'all sep are y'all separated? At the we time were still? separated at the time, but, but still, I, still but, dabbling, I guess. Well, what? there was a, for a long time no, and then when I moved to Greenville, it was like two months of being back together, and then bailed. Right. So here I am in Greenville, all by myself. That is thirteen. That is two thousand thirteen. Okay. So I literally, I joined the military a week before my twentieth birthday, and I got out exactly on my thirtieth birthday. So April 8th, 20, uh, 2013, the day I turned 30 years old was the day I signed my final piece of paper in the army and was gone. So here I am in Greenville and I don't know anybody. I don't have anything. What, what was your first job when you got here? So I was, my first job was actually at Augusta Grill. Okay. Um, and that's ultimately how I know a lot of these guys. Yep. Um, and so I was, I started waiting tables at Augusta Grill and it was, I'm a proud person. I was on unemployment and I was just, I felt 
and it's just me. I'm not saying this about other people on employment, but it's just the way I was raised that to me, that was something that I looked down on myself for. Right. So even though I'm in school and I'm doing these things, like, and you're I in barber to, school then you're yeah, in college so school. I, yeah. yeah. So I started looking for a job. Yeah. So I, I went into Augusta grill because, you know, restaurant jobs, I mean, still had a background in rent. So easy, flexible hours. I can go to school, work. So I walk into Augusta grill, hired me right on the spot. And I was ultimately making a hundred dollars less a week doing that than I was on unemployment. But like I said, my pride, I needed a job. Yeah. So here I am, I start working at Augusta Grill, going to school, but in the meantime, like I lose everything. Like my house, I couldn't afford it by myself after she left, I couldn't afford anything. Like So you, y'all move in together, huh? y'all renting a place? Yeah. Renting mm -hmm. a place and moving together. Yep. That shit dissolves, yep. falls apart. <clears throat> So the continuation of your struggles from Augusta as the military kind of shuts right. down, or not shuts down, but as that closes, right. that kind of continues here, that relationship dissolves. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and now you're like. I'm by myself. Yeah. Like I am here in Greenville and I don't know anybody other than a few people that I worked in a I restaurant work. with. Yeah. And which by the way, are still some of my closest friends. Right. And so here I am in Greenville all by myself. Um, you know how South Carolina laws are, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta go through the year long separation and all that stuff. So amid that, all that going down, I met my current wife. And so, which again, like we've been together seven years now, almost eight. And she's my best friend. How did you meet her? So, Tinder. No shit, for <laughs> yeah. real? No shit. <laughs> Met my wife on Tinder. And sidebar, sidebar on that. As a matter of fact, we actually just talked about this this weekend at a wedding in Pennsylvania in <laughs> Philly. And so she had noped me a bunch of times. Yeah. So she kept coming back up on my screen and I kept swipe, always swipe yes on her. She's hot. And so I kept swiping yes. And then one time, I'm like, oh, here's this chick again. And I swiped yes on it, of course. And all of a sudden it was like, you've matched. And I'm like, huh, I'm not matched with this girl the last 10 times she showed up on my damn thing. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, all right, be cool about this. Shoot her a message, see what's up. So we ended up, she, my wife You're like, goes, what's yeah, up? I like you, You're very cool. I like you, we're getting married and having babies. But no, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so she, she, my wife does hair as well, so she owns Wild Hair Parlor, right next to Old Crow Barbershop. And so, when I met my wife, I was literally like on that cusp of like losing everything. Mm -hmm. But again, I was so determined to finish school that I wasn't gonna let anything stop me. Okay. If I had to sleep in my car, I was gonna sleep in my car. Like, I, I had a dream, I had a vision, I was going for it. So, sure enough, lost my house, lost my car, I lost pretty much, when I say I lost everything, I mean, I lost everything. But again, mm -hmm. my determination level was this, like everything is temporary. Where do you live when you, when you, where do you live when the, when the house is gone? So my wife asked her parents if I could crash in their basement for a little while, while I, for a couple weeks, a couple weeks while I finished okay. school. A couple, couple weeks. weeks was six months. <laughs> <laughs> Still it's a couple weeks. A couple weeks, you know. So. Her parents are awesome. I love her parents to death. Um, her father is a Vietnam vet, Purple Heart. So we had a lot in common yeah. and a lot to talk about. Um, he's a pastor uh, or retired, just retired a few years ago. Amazing man and been a huge influence in my life and uh, somebody that I really look up to a lot. And even her mom, mom's a pain in my butt and I love her to death, but <laughs> I, love, I love my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> and, but she's an, she's also she's also an amazing person she's a very kind heart and um they allowed me to stay at their house while i finished barber school um and you know these are things that i've not shared with a lot of people right. but you know i mean it's it's my it's it's the truth of of how i got to where i am today yeah. and as uncomfortable it is for me to yeah. even talk about sometimes everybody gets to places on the back of others exactly. right it's like and everybody has struggles and it's not always not the back the shoulders of right others. it's not always 
a perfect path to success in life, there's going to be struggles. There's going to be times where you yeah. are at your lowest. And I met my wife when I was at my lowest. And, she, you know, her family has become my family. She has been my rock. Um, if it wasn't for her helping me get to where I am today, I mean, I wouldn't be here. Right, yeah. And, you know, so we, I stayed with her parents for about six months. I finished school, moved into a shitty little apartment out in Spartanburg and was commuting all the way out here to Greenville. Because um, that's where school is. School, no, called, school's, in, school's in Powdersville. So oh, okay, I was okay, commuting okay. all the way out from there <clears throat> to there. Um, but so cosmetology school is in Powdersville. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, oh, Kenneth Schuler. I was thinking in Spartanburg for some odd reason. Well, there's one in Spartanburg. Okay. So, um, but you know, again, everything kind of aligned for me again as well. When, um, one of my best friends, Josh McCoy, who works at old crow barbershop. And now. He's a, he's a classmate of yours at the yeah, school. So, okay. uh, he graduated before I did, okay. but, uh, yeah, we were there at the same time. You were there at the same mm -hmm. time? Okay. So Josh graduated. He went to work for a shop that um, I'm not going to name, but he went to work for a shop and then had a really bad experience at that shop okay. and ended up going off to open up his own shop in Lyman. So the day that I graduated school was the day that he left that shop to go do to go start in Lyman. Okay. So it was a perfect door for me to, to go, go straight from school, shop. straight into a, a, a job where at a very, at that time, reputable shop. Right, 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 right. Um, so that's where- Just um, the stars lining yeah, up Yeah, that's for where you like right literally <clears throat> everything just kind of started to line up for, you know, for success ultimately. Yeah, 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 for and sure. So I met Josh, Josh, I was getting my haircut there, so I, I knew Josh very well again. You know, we didn't really know each other that well in school, but we became better friends after school. Yes. So Josh is, Josh is- And you're, more, are you becoming good friends with him just sitting in his chair? Yeah, so I mean, I was cutting his hair. We were hanging out a little bit after, okay. you know, things like that, right, right. but- Does he have um, a, I'm going on a side tangent uh -huh. here, does he have a car interest too? Yeah, I, yeah. I know so, you're a car so, guy. So yeah, so we all, that was also kind of the thing too. Like at that time though, we were all a bunch of broke, you know, broke, broke dicks, if you yeah. will. Yeah, yeah. Um, you had a lot of pictures of nice of, cars. Had a lot of pictures of nice cars right. <laughs> and a lot of things that we wanted. Right, 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 right. But so, so Josh went and opened up um, Liberty Liberty Fine Cuts and Shaves in Lyman. Okay. And then um, I took his spot at the other shop. Right. So and that's also where I met Brian. And Brian is working at the yeah. This, Brian's this Brian's my partner. Name, remain nameless. In, other right, barbershop. The remain nameless other shop. Yeah. So Brian and I are working together continue to get put in bad situations. Pin, yeah. let's eat this. Pin, okay. Let's do it. Oh yeah. Do Hot we need sauce. to put this? Yeah, here. Got a fork. Oh! Is that wear hot sauce? I'm gonna dip mm. this. So oh, good. golly. Oh, is that your first bite of that? Mm hmm. Mm. Dude, what is all in here? My wife is. There's roasted chicken, like some spinach, tomatoes, red peppers. My wife watched one of these the other day cheese. and she's like, she's like, I've seen you do this to food our entire relationship. You like break it apart and try to figure and look out every in little thing. Yeah. Oh no, these are, this is a guac. I mean, uh, avocado oh, yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. Roasted red peppers, spinach. Mm -hmm. Man. I gotta come back to this place. It's just so good. Um, I think there's, Maybe even like some mango in there a little bit. Or yeah, there's something, something sweet. There's something yeah. sweet oh, in there. Uh, oh, plantains. mango's right there. Plantains. Mm. Greg, that's plantains in there, yeah? Greg left. We have the run of it. We got of the run of it. Of more, oh, another shot. Another shot? <laughs> oh. Now that is a good combo. That's oh, the mango. The mango, it just gives it that, but the plantains and the mango and the chicken, it's perfect, Man. dude. Like, there's a reason, their menu is very, 
they got a good range in their menu. Like you've got burritos, you've got burgers, you've got those tacos that we just ate, mm. and wings. Like we live right up the road from here. So this is like our go-to, our go-to spot. And in Traveler's Rest, I mean, you don't, you've got some good, uh, you know, food options here at Traveler's mm -hmm. Rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But by far, about, this yeah. is Neat place. one of the best places in Traveler's Rest. And the nice thing about this place too, though, was you come here fairly often. It's like a lot of regulars. So it's like, it's like walking into your, your kitchen one night. I mean, you just, you know everybody, like, Half the people in here are people that live right around in this yeah. area that you know. Like, That's great. Really good family restaurant with a good bar. And where is this other, where is this one in, where is it down, is it in Greenville? Where is it, they have the second one of these somewhere? The, yeah, so it's Easy right there, say, right across from Falls Park. Mm. Right, right, right. It's upstairs. Kind of in that building, mm -hmm. I think Jana's or whatever is mm -hmm. in. Oh, in, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think My wife you, loves that place, by the way. Which one? Gianna's. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. It's good. We've been there a few times. <coughs> All right, so you are All right. cutting hair. You've yep. got uh, McCoy's up. Josh is up in Lyman. Lyman. Josh is in Lyman. And you meet, me, and Brian are, meet me and Brian at the other shop. At the shop. And I had a girl that I went to hair school with that called me one day, and she was like, hey, I'm looking for a Are you thinking about opening a spot by this point in time? I, I am, but it really hadn't. We hadn't even taken the first step yet, okay. but it was something that we had discussed, Brian and I, but it wasn't something that, like I said, we, the, we hadn't taken any of the first steps right, yet. Right, right, right. This is just something we're having a beer right. after Talked work. about it, you know, whatever. Wouldn't um, it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice, that yeah. type of thing. So I had a girl hit me up that I went to school with that was like, hey, do you know of any salons in the area, area hiring? And it just so happened that probably the day before, as I'm driving to work one day down Wade Hampton, I see there was a salon called Top Hats. And I remember seeing a help wanted sign in their window as I was driving past. And I was like, yeah, actually there's a salon. I don't know what, what their reputation is or what, you know, anything about the place, but they got a help wanted sign. You want me to stop and get you the number? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. So my way into work the next day, I pull in the parking lot and I pull up to the to the salon, and the building owner and a maintenance guy okay. are standing out in front, yep. just looking at the place. So I get out and I walk up and I realize the entire building is empty. Oh. And so the, the help wanted sign had just been sitting there. Yeah, yeah. And well, as of the night before, oh, they packed up and just dipped. Pack up your scissors. I mean, really. <laughs> ultimately, they were just disappeared overnight. <laughs> And so I'm standing there all of a sudden with the building owner and her maintenance guy, and I'm looking at the space and she goes, are you interested in the space? And this is not even in your, this, this is not even in your imagination. I mean, it is even, in your imagination, but not like. Right, not, not, not this quickly. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, I don't know the first thing about opening up a business at this yeah. point, like not, I don't even know. You're still getting good cutting hair, I'm right? So good, I'm still working on cutting hair yeah. and just getting good at my craft. Well, she looks at me and she says, uh, if you're thinking about renting this space, I'll give you a really good deal on it right now. And I said, oh. So you pull, you, you pull into this spot. Yeah. And you're like, I'm going to go help a friend out, get an application. Or right. Right, right, right. And you pull in and, and it's empty. Is it empty? And completely, it's completely empty? completely empty. And there's people, in, there's a, a guy the, and a gal yeah, in there walking around. the building around. owner and the maintenance guy sitting there. And so I'm like, wow. it was just everything kind of aligned at that moment for right. me. And I said, okay, I said, let me get your number. I said, let me go talk to my buddy, Brian, and I'm going to call you back. So that happened on a Thursday, um, which was the 1st of July. This is 14, right? 2014? This is 2014. We opened in 2015, August 2015. So this is early 2015. 50, early 15, okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> it was like July 1st when, when, I, when this happened. And I, I remember, because I went over, I went back, I talked to Brian, and Brian and I found out some stuff that, you know, we were just like, we got to leave where we're at. We cannot right, okay. continue to be here. And so we 
I saw the space on the first, took Brian by there on the second, the day after 4th of July, or no, 3rd of July, day before the 4th of July, we signed the lease. I had no hours. fucking clue <laughs> what my next step was going to be. These are chairs? You got no any chairs? Fucking clue. I didn't have shit, dude. I had nothing. <laughs> I knew that I had three months where I didn't have to pay rent to turn this shithole space into a barber shop. So you, so you got a three month window. Basically three months of free rent before I had to start paying rent. So my thinking was this, okay, if we can get all this shit done and ready to open, we can start this barber shop. So we talked to a guy that came in the barber shop. He had a couple chairs and he was always trying to sell them to us. <laughs> and so I called this dude up and I said, Hey, you still got those three chairs? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Brian and I buy these three chairs. We start getting online and looking at equipment. And I mean, we did it about as bare bones as you can possibly do it. When we first- and Where opened, is that shop? Where is so that, that shop? So that was on, it's Wade Hampton, right across, the address is actually escaping my mind at the moment, but there's a salon in there now. It's right across from like the old Luthi Mortgage Building. And there's like a uh, end time harvest thrift store. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're right okay. on the yeah, end yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gotcha. called Velvet Roots now is the salon okay. that's there right now. I don't know that, but I'm yeah, getting yeah. that. I've got that. Yeah. Yeah. So we literally go in there. I got some hammers and some saws and we just started breaking shit and making it happen. Does Brian know how to use a, Absolutely a not. hammer? Look, Brian, I love Brian <laughs> I figure. Death. I figure he didn't know how to use a I love a Brian hammer. to death. Brian will forever be with me no matter what. But... We were j literally just in there wrecking shit and painting and like, okay, Brian, do you got, look, we need like 200 bucks for this. Do you got, you got a hundred bucks? Cause have gotta, no, you have no money. We no fucking money, dude. Yeah. Like no fucking Cause money. You were, um, you were basically homeless with, but for Now your, at this point, I mean, I've got a, we've got I mean, I mean, like a year before that. Right, 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 right. A year but, before that, you're basically almost homeless, but for your, well, your, your, and also my wife was pregnant. Oh, that's a good twist. So. I knew that I couldn't continue to be where I was at. So there was a big motivation there also about, okay, I've got a child coming. Um, I'm married. Um, like I got to do more than what I'm doing to provide for my family. I mean, I could have provided for my family on what I did, but it's not the life that I wanted for my yeah, family. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it literally was like, okay, you got a hundred bucks. I got a hundred bucks. Okay. We can buy some paint. Okay, you got you got two hundred bucks. I got two hundred bucks. Y'all still cutting hair at the other joint? Oh yeah. Okay, you're so still we were hair literally joint. cutting no. hair all day long, and then we had papered up the windows. And then right when we were done, we would go over and park behind the building so our boss wouldn't see our cars over there. You're keeping that all a secret. Keeping it totally under Anybody know inside? Nobody. The, nobody. Just nobody. Just Brian and I knew, and like Did Josh my wife know. Uh, Josh knew. Yeah. Josh knew, because we had tried to like bring Josh, but he had just started that shop. He was doing okay. And so we basically get every, scrape together every fucking pay. I mean, I sold some guns. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm like doing everything I can to scrape money together for this barber shop. So again, no idea what I'm doing. No idea how to start. I didn't know, like, I go down to city hall and do what? Yeah. You know what I no, mean? I, like, no, no, no idea about licenses. I got nobody telling me Do they what teach I, you that in? Hell uh, no. They just teach you how to cut hair. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, we gotta have a business license, I knew that. So we go down and we do the business license thing, we get all this stuff done by the skin of our teeth. And our old boss used to like to uh, call out sick a lot. Oh, wow. And so we were gonna tell him on a Saturday. And so we, like again, just been every night working on the shop, finally get it dialed in. So he almost fired me one day because whatever. I'm not even gonna get that, but he almost fires me one day, and because I, he wanted me to do something that I was just wasn't gonna do, and so he gets all pissed at me. He's like, "You can pack your shit, you can get the hell out of here, blah blah blah." And I look at Brian, and I'm like, "I'm out of here. You coming with me?" And so he, we both went outside and talked about it. I was like, "Well, just give it a couple more days. We just got a few more things to button up." So it's like, "Okay." So I go in. We were gonna tell him on that Saturday that we were leaving mm. and starting on Tuesday. Yep, okay. Well, we show up to work on Saturday morning. He called out 
and didn't cancel any of his appointments. So it was basically on us to cancel or take care of his appointments. As they walked in all day long. As, and our appointments and everything. So we literally packed up our stuff that morning, sat there for 20 minutes, t- sent a text to every single person on his books and our books and everything that, hey, we're moving right up the street. Today's the day. <laughs> <clears throat> so we literally packed all our stuff up, went down and started cutting hair in our new barber shop. Did you cut, did you cut hair that day on that, that Saturday? Day, that day, packed up our clippers, went 400 yards up the road, Pack up your clippers. started cutting hair in our, new, our brand new barber wow. shop. So yeah, like that was it. That's when it all started. And we did it, we did it very organically once the business got started. We started with just Brian and I. Okay. And then we went from Brian and I and Josh was working out in Lyman. And the problem with working in a small town like Lyman is that these guys don't want to pay more than 10 bucks for a haircut. Mm. So Josh is out there Neither do I. doing, yeah, I know you don't, but you do. <laughs> but you do. Oh, that's right. So, so Josh is out there, can't even hardly pay the rent on his space because he can't get people to pay more than 10 bucks for a haircut. I mean, you gotta think, I mean, two haircuts an hour at 10 bucks a haircut, that's 20 bucks an hour, but then you gotta, you gotta subtract your taxes and your, oh, your, like what you gotta set aside for rent and everything else. Yeah. I mean, you're basically walking away with 12 bucks an hour and you're running your own business at that point. So uh, Josh was like, you know what, screw this. I don't want to work for myself anymore. It's too much you know, struggle in Lyman. He goes, I'm going to come to work with you guys. I said, done. This is spring of 16, right? No, this is like within three months, okay. three or four months wow. of us opening our doors. So Josh comes down. So I got another chair. And I brought it in there and I set it up, set up a whole nother station for Josh. And then there was another shop that had opened up. Um, So Josh basically sold that shop to another person. They moved downtown Greenville. There was some issues that they had. Um, Now they're very good friends of ours, Liberty Fine Cuts and Shaves, like very good friends of ours. And, but Robbie worked at Liberty Fine Cuts and Shaves. So Robbie, they had some drama, some issues there. Right. So Robbie left okay. and came to me, and so I hired Robbie. So I had to knock down a wall, and I had to put a fourth chair in there for Robbie, and then there was four of us. So, so we grew really organically. It was like Brian and I's books were so full in those first right. several months that like you couldn't get an appointment with us for a month. And then we brought in Josh, and then we brought in Robbie, and it just turned into this wonderful thing where it was like, four really good friends who work really well together, who do awesome haircuts and have an awesome vibe. And then we weren't utilizing all the space for that we had in this, this space. You're still in Wade, at Wade Hampton. We're still right in Wade Hampton. Okay. So it used to be a bunch of individual salon rooms down one side. So my wife was working in a salon and she hated it. Uh-huh. And again, okay. my wife had helped front the money, some of the money to open up Old Crow Barbershop. So we've got this space, she's hating where she's at. So we knocked down some of the walls, put in another entrance, and now we've got Old Crow Barbershop and Wild Hair Parlor in the same space. So rewind a little bit, uh-huh. like when you're getting all these licenses and all this other oh, yeah. stuff, like what is, besides the pain point of trying to figure out all these licenses, what are some of the things that are like, you never imagined that would be a problem when you first opened? Um, stupid shit like the, we had to jump through a bunch of hoops, um, getting the electricity turned on because the last place that was there, because it was a salon, they just, we had to jump through a bunch of hoops to prove that we had nothing to do with them because they left like a $1,500 electricity bill. So the whole time we're working on the the space, we had no electricity. So we were running extension cords from the building next door <laughs> into the barber shop so that we could have, we couldn't get the power turned on. We couldn't get the power turned on. 
we had to get like notarized paperwork and stuff stating that we had nothing to do with the previous business. Wow. So we're, we're over there and I'm telling you, dude, hot as balls. Yes. So we're over there in the middle June, July, August in there. I'm in there one night and this is kind of a little side story. I'm in there one night and I'm in basketball shorts and a wife beater that is like just drenched. Brian's over there. He's drenched. All of a sudden it starts pouring outside. Okay. And this slightly inappropriate story, maybe, but it's fine. So, so <laughs> we're standing there and Brian and I are standing in the window watching the rain come down. And all of a sudden we see this very large woman in a Garfield t-shirt walking across the street on her cell phone. And it's, it's pouring, pouring. Rain. All of a sudden it was like, she just like knew we were there and it was like, bing. And she like sees us. So we're like running around, like pretending like we're working. All of a sudden here she is at our front door. And she goes, she walks in and she goes, excuse me, what y'all doing in here? And I'm like, oh, building a barbershop. She's like, you, you can braid my hair, you can braid my hair. And I'm like, ah. Uh, She's soaking wet Soaking too. wet. And she goes, well, listen, you guys, you guys need some work done around here? And I'm like, no, not really. We're kind of not really there yet. And she's like, well, listen, if you need something, I'll do anything. <laughs> and at that moment, I turned and looked at Brian. And Brian, Brian is like the most holy, pure person you will ever meet. You're like, Brian just like does no wrong. Like if there was ever anybody in my life that was going to be sainted, it would be Brian. And Brian's standing there with this look on his face like, oh, no. Oh, no. And I said, I don't need anything done. But Brian, you need anything? And I walked off. <laughs> and she's standing there. She goes, sir, I'll do anything. And Brian's like, oh, well, I don't, I don't really need anything done right now. And she's like, but you don't understand. I'll anything. do anything. And I'm standing in the back. And I walked into the bathroom. And I've got, I'm just listening to this happening in front. And I'm like tears are streaming down from my face because I am crying laughing. So finally she leaves and I walk out there and Brian is just like, I don't think that's ever happened to me before. And he isn't like, he's white, pure shock, has no idea what just, God. That he just got propositioned by some 400 pound, 400 pound lady in a Garfield t-shirt. But yeah, that is fantastic. It was hilarious. So so y'all get this open, you get the, the wife comes over, she's, yep. she gets in a spot. Yeah. Um, things are... We reached, basically, we reached a point of, like, maximum capacity, ultimately. Like, she had another girl working for her, we had four chairs, we maxed out that space. How did, rewind, how, how did you get it, how did y'all make enough money the first month? To, when did you did you did you open on that three month we kind actually, of point? No, we actually opened up at the beginning of we made everything happen in about a month and a half. So we were actually able to get in the shop uh, August first, ultimately, and be opened up. And so, so we you had actually a, you had, had a little mo a month or so a, to, to make again, some money and not have to pay rent. Again, yeah, again, we were so busy, we were booked out a month right at the right, right at the, at the rip. beginning. So we were. Is that just from your? We made our rent, customer base from the other place, just other place, like, and just and word, word of, mouth. of mouth. Yeah. So we actually, we were actually able to have our first month's rent paid within the first week. So we were. It just. I mean, we were extremely blessed. Man. I mean, we worked our asses off, but you know, we were blessed. We yeah. truly were blessed. I mean, that. I didn't, I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know anything about opening a business. I didn't know anything about marketing or social media to that extent yeah. or anything like that. So, I mean, we just kind of did what we did and it worked for us. Right. Just and basic cash flow yeah. and you know, that stuff is I mean, completely foreign to you at that point in time. Oh, absolutely. Right? Like, absolutely. Yeah. I had zero idea on how to open a business, let alone how to do my taxes, let alone how to do anything. So, literally, it just kind of like, we just dealt with it as we came across it, yeah. you know? So after three years of being in that space, I mean, we had car shows, we had drive-in movie nights, we started throwing community events because- how did, you, how did you figure out all of that kind of stuff? Like doing the car shows and the, you know, like, is that from- Well, with the car show, we are obviously all into old cars. Right. And I had a 66 uh, Ford F100 that I was driving and 
Josh had a, God, I don't even can't remember what he had at that I point. I want a mid-70s one if you see any yeah. around. Yeah, no, I got you. I okay. got you. I can find it. But um, and then Brian's <laughs> got a Galaxy. Like, so we knew, though, that we didn't want to just be a barber shop. We wanted to be, we wanted to be active in our community. Mm -hmm. And uh, ultimately, in the traditions of a true classic barber shop, right. being part of your community is first and foremost. Like, a traditional barber shop is where everybody went to get the local gossip. I mean, this is before social media and everything, where that's where you went to find out what's going on around town. Right, that's right, right, you, right, right, right. That's where right. you go to talk to your buddies mm, yep. and shoot the shit. So that's what we were really trying to bring back and really encompass within our business was community. I didn't want it to just be guys coming to get haircut and leaving. Like when, I wanted you, you to be able to walk in and somebody else be able to walk in that you know, and you guys sit and have a beer, shoot the shit oh, and get yeah, your hair cut. Yeah. I wanted it to be a thing where it's like, you're gonna know somebody when you walk in yeah. there. When so, were you able to like make that you know, I know like when you're, you're working, you're, 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 you're sweating, you're doing boom, 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 boom. When are you able to like say, okay, here's how we're going to start to market. Here's how we're going to start to like lay the groundwork for this kind of stuff. Or is it just kind of, it just, it wasn't really like I had a game plan. Uh -huh. I just knew that, okay, we got to do something on Instagram and I didn't know what to post on Instagram. Right. We just started doing dumb shit. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like we literally really did. It's like. I take a picture of Josh eating a Pocky chip that was hotter than, you know, anything else right, out there. Right. And, or I, I, you know, we do just post pictures of like, you know, hey, we set up a margarita bar today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, hey, it's Saturday, we're gonna play cartoons and uh, have Bloody Marys, so come on by. You know what I mean? Like, right, right, it really right. wasn't, I didn't really have like a formula for social media. I just had an idea of things that I thought were fun yep. and that I wanted to do. And so I just figured, hey, if you like doing these things, then come on by, yeah. you know? And also, you know, I mean, I didn't really want the business to be, there's a lot of businesses out there that really capitalize on the veteran owned business thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't really necessarily want to do that, but it's kind of, it's kind of segued into that. Like we have a lot of veterans and a really cool, solid veteran community mm -hmm. that comes in the barbershop law enforcement i mean it's really turned into a really good community at this point in the game yep. like we've just really developed a really awesome sense of community whether especially with the law enforcement veteran community but also with just your regular everyday people i mean i found y'all just googling yeah like trying to find a barbershop mm -hmm. that was like in charleston i got my hair cut by one girl for like yeah. seven or eight years yeah. at one of those like you know, fancy places that I adored. Right. Right. And I still wish you would wash my hair and rub my shoulders. Every I mean, time I can I come start rubbing there. your shoulders a little bit. If, <laughs> if that's something that you need, but you know, I mean, you would go in those places, you just get pampered. Oh, and, yeah. and but what, there's what, a difference. Which what she cut on an amazing head of hair right. was, was I'm the, sure. was the walk away message there. And right. like, when I got up here, I was like, well, I started getting $10 haircuts, right. Or $8 right. haircuts. Right. I really like the pleasure of like being able to log in at Supercuts or wherever the hell it was right. and like get a reservation, walk in and get my haircut. But it was terrible right. haircuts. No offense. Well, and but, it's not even. But I found y'all just Googling yeah. and and, and y'all are, I mean, it's a 20 minute something drive for me to come over right. to my haircut, you know? Well, but that's the thing too, though, is that again, you've got guys that like the head wash and all these things. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Like you can walk right next door to my wife's salon and get that all day. My wife does amazing men's hair. Ah, oh, see, I should have Don't gone you next dare. <laughs> but, but we offer something different. We're not trying to be that. Yeah. And you know, the other thing is too, is like, we've gotten to the point where it's like, we don't even really do a lot on social media anymore because of what we've built. Mm -hmm. We've built, like I said, you can go next door and get your head washed. But if you want a different experience, you come to the barbershop and what you get at the barbershop is some advice about, you know, this, that, or the other, whatever, talk about whatever's going on in your life. I mean, shoot the shit with guys. And there's a reason that, you know, I put a lot of thought into how the shop was laid out. There's a reason why three chairs face this way and the other three chairs face this way and why your fate, all the clients are facing the middle. And it's not, it's, it's more so mm. that everybody sees everybody yep. 
you could be talking to Robbie's client down here. Robbie could be talking to Brian's client over here. And mm. that's the, 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 the part of it is this, it's, you're not just getting a good haircut, you're also making friends. You're also meeting other people in your community. Yeah. And so that's, that's what you get when you come to a barbershop. You're gonna get a good haircut, you're gonna get a hot towel, you're gonna get a neck shave, you're gonna get, you know, some product, a beer, that kind of thing. Yeah. But Should I bring my own oil and? <laughs> no, no, I got you. <laughs> but what you're gonna get is, especially with as much growth as we've seen in Greenville yeah. over the yeah. years, we got guys that come in, oh, you're from California? Oh, oh, you're from New York? Oh, me too, what part of New York are you from? What part of California yeah, 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 are you from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And next thing you know, these guys are walking out, exchanging numbers, making a new friend in, right. a, in a city that they're not familiar with. And what do they have in common? Old Crow Barbershop. Yeah. And that to me is, is, is important, especially being somebody like me that moved to Greenville where I didn't know anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and so truthfully- I've got a good thing too with the continuity of all the guys in oh, there, yeah. right? It's like the, there's, there's it's not been, a lot of turnover like there would be at right. some other place that you no, might- No, for sure, um, for sure. We all work really well together. I've, and that's one thing that I'm very fortunate in, in which, is, which is not necessarily what I've had at the Clemson location, but where we are now, it's like me, Robbie, Brian, Josh, I've all known each other for years at this point. But then you being, bring in like Brent, for yep. example. Brent, um, we've known Brent for a long time. He's mm -hmm. played some of our car shows with his band. Brent fits in perfectly. Andrew, who's, who's our newest guy, he's from Southern California. But, you know, he's into motorcycles. He's into guns. Mm -hmm. He's into a lot of the things we're into good solid guy all the guys that work there like i don't ever have to worry about like well where's so and so at this morning yeah. why isn't he here and Mike like calling out or whatever or, or you know that cut looked like crap you know what i mean yeah. like i'm very fortunate to have the crew of guys that yeah. i have and that's also what's made this business successful yeah it's not just it's not me and what me and brian have done or or the social media marketing and all these and the events that we've thrown i really believe it's the fact that there are six guys that work in this shop that are friends, mm. that the vibe is positive. Um, don't get me wrong, like we're six guys that have worked in the same room together for years at this point. We're gonna get on each other's throats a little bit. Yeah, and they're like, little, here goes Eric with uh, that other story again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've now, heard this story, it's uh, like my wife. <laughs> oh, they, they loved it. Oh, heard this story before, you know, that's just me. So but. let me, let's, let me, as we probably tie this bow yeah, here, yeah, yeah. I, my, my thought is, or my, my next question would be, how, what was it like? Why did you think about opening the Clemson shop? And what's been difficult about that? There's been a lot of struggles what with was opening. The, first off, what was the thought? The like, thought go to was, Clemson. I've always, I've, Clemson's been on my radar for a long time because we have had a lot of students from Clemson that drive all the way to Greenville to get their hair cut. Okay. So it was on my radar then. And again, blessed. I'm very blessed in, in how everything was laid out for me. You know, I mean, I definitely have to thank God for everything that I've got because I didn't go to Clemson looking for a barbershop. A barbershop came looking for me. Okay. So all of a sudden I got this guy right after we opened back up from quarantine. I got a guy that is sitting in my chair talking about, hey, man, I got this building in Clemson that's already a barbershop that just, I don't know what to do with it, man. You want to come take a look at it? And so, again, I didn't really have, I was never over ambitious and wanted to own 10 barber shops and put one on every corner. I just kind of wanted to have a, maybe one or two that were in good spots that, you know, mm -hmm. to yeah. replicate yeah. the same thing. Yeah. But all of a sudden here again, same with the first shop, this shop falls in my lap. Right. And I go out there and I look at it and it's not necessarily like the most grandiose location or the grandiose barber shop, mm. but it was there. And the price was right. Everything just lined up for it. I had the, I had extra chairs. I had extra right. equipment. So I got in there, spent a couple weeks in there painting, getting it, started a little social media campaign. Right. Had a couple guys already looking to work. Joel, who was also one of the original, well, he's original at the second location. He was our apprentice at the Greenville location. Okay. One of the most solid dudes ever. And it was a really hard for me to, um, <clears throat> it was really hard for me to move him out there because of how much I like, I like the guy yeah. and I like working with the guy. So he's the one who's running but that shop Joel, out there. Joel's my manager out of the Clemson shop. Uh, very trustworthy guy. So um, 
we've had some turnover a little bit out has there. Has that been the, that the number one struggle there? Is it's like, definitely been a little bit of the turnover. How is the, how is the, I guess the customer base a little more transient? The customer base is a little more transient and it definitely is busier, but the way that it basically <laughs> works is they're busier than we are in Greenville most of the year. And then they slow down in the summer, Summertime. but they're not dead. Right. So it's still a good flow, but you know, just that just comes with managing your money. Yep. Put a little money aside during the year, take a little time off during the summer. It's really not that hard. And those guys do really well out there. You just had more turnover out there. Than Definitely more turnover. Other thing is, is if there were a lot of barbers that lived out there that were worth a the crap, there'd be other barber shops in Clemson. Yeah. So I'm having to take guys. That's the biggest struggle is finding guys that I can bring or that are willing to go, go to Clemson yeah. and cut hair or finding guys that are there that I have that I can train. And so I'm, I take a lot of pride in our name. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just going to throw barbers out there. Oh, you, you, you have a license and you can yeah. cut hair. Okay, just go start working. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Like, I want to train you. I want to know that you're reliable. I want to know that you can at least come close to the level of quality that we expect at Old Crow Barbershop. And we're not perfect. We've, we've got customers I'm sure we've pissed off over the years and things like that. I mean, it's business. You're not perfect, but we really do try to strive mm. to keep a certain level of, you know, quality. Now our professionalism isn't always the best because, <laughs> dude, we're a barbershop. We're a bunch yeah. of dudes. If we, yeah. you're going to hear some cussing, you're going to hear some inappropriate talk more than likely. Yeah. But, you know, there's lines we don't cross. But right. we're a place for guys, and it's finding people that can fit into that environment that aren't uh -huh. going to be offended by certain things. So, I mean. There's always there's been a little bit of a struggle, but for the most part, it's. I mean, I we're we're extremely blessed for for where we where so, we started, and so where we are. in a roundabout not roundabout kind of way, but it just how do you explain the success in the last few years? Like, is it just sheer uh, luck? Is it? I don't want to say it's sheer luck because I'll or? tell you this. I mean, for the first several years, I mean, I worked seven days a week, you know, and it's still like I work technically. I'm behind the chair four days a week, but I'm still on my uh, days off. I'm still working. I'm still doing things for the shop. I mean, so there is a lot of work into it. And, but I, I really do, I do believe that, you know, God has had a hand in, in mm -hmm. our success, but also kind of allowed things to fall into our lap. You know, I mean, we, we try to pray about everything. We try to, you know, make sure that we're, we're doing the right thing, you yep. know, I mean, and I think that, you know, karma is also you know part of that too right you know i mean you do the right thing and you do the right by people and you do right by your community and your community is going to see that and your community is going to give back to you yep. what you've given to them keep busting your ass yep. doing all of those things and then you just happen to get mm -hmm. get lucky right when I mean, you're kicking yeah. ass right like like absolutely uh, and i know like I, I don't really like the term lucky yeah but because i feel like luck for people is something that just falls in your lap and all of a sudden like, oh, yeah. like, I feel like lucky yeah. is winning the lottery. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I feel like... When you're I, doing all those I other things, like karma or, you're increasing your surface area exactly. of, luck, of the possibility well, for luck but to I feel hit like you. Putting good energy out there and, and again, doing positive things for your community, you're going to get that energy and that love back. Like That's you how you give, get lucky, I You think. give yeah. love, yeah. you get love. You yeah. know what I mean? And so I think that's been a big part of our, our success more than, more than a lot of other factors mm. and when it comes to business is because we truly love our community. Yeah. You know what I mean? We really do care about the people that come in our barbershop. And you know, it's like, great, you know, we'll piss people off or somebody, somebody will get mad or whatever and not like their haircut and people get weird about certain things. But there's times where I've reached out, out to people and been like, hey man, like we haven't seen you in a while. You've been coming to the barbershop for five years like is everything all right are you doing okay right, like, right, right. Yeah, yeah. we do generally take a vested interest in the people that come into yeah. our barbershop you're not just some name that's on our schedule that we cut your hair like my clients now like you for example like i know that when i look at my schedule in the morning i recognize almost every single name on my schedule and i can put a face with that name i know who your your kids are i know who your wife is i know what you do for yeah. a living and those are the kind of relationships that really truly i think make a barbershop 
really mm. what, part of community. Amen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know who you are. Like, I know you. I've cut your children's hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, to me, is something that I don't take for granted as a barber or somebody that does that because I love to see your kids grow just as right. much as I like to see my kids grow. Right. I love to see your business grow just as much right. as I like to see my business yeah. grow. And taking that vested interest in people yeah. as opposed to just coming in and getting a haircut, I think, is really, really important for my industry, especially. Mm. So.